So, vacuum chamber or pressure pot? Which one should you use? Well, these are two solutions for the same problem, but which one should we use for casting silicone toys? Hey everyone, my name is Derek and I am the owner, creator, and head silicone slinger here at Amavidi where we make silicone toys for adults. So, vacuum or pressure, and why do we need to use either of them? Well, let's start with the second question first. When we're mixing the silicone, we're often whipping air into the mix. Kind of like a meringue or a fluffy omelet. There are tons of air bubbles mixed into the silicone, some big, some small, some you can see, some you can't, but they exist. And once the silicone cures, those bubbles will be trapped forever. But each one of those bubbles is a place for the wee beasties to grow and thrive. What are the wee beasties? Well, we're talking about mold, bacteria, things like that. All the stuff you don't want growing on your toy. I think we can all agree that's a bad thing. So how do we get rid of those air bubbles? Casting under pressure crushes those bubbles to the point where we can't see them. Now that doesn't mean that the bubbles don't exist, it just means that we can't see them. And that's often how resins are cast. The other option is to vacuum that air out before it even goes into the mold. To do this, we take the mixed silicone while it's still in the mixing cup and subject it to a vacuum for several minutes. Once air stops rising out of the silicone, then we know it's been completely degassed and it can go directly into the mold from there. This is the industry standard for indie toy makers, but why? Well, by vacuuming, we're actually removing the issue by removing the air, whereas pressure just hides the problem. Okay, but you might be wondering, how do I set up a vacuum system for making silicone toys? Well, that's a topic for another video. And with that, I am out, and I will see you in the next video.